Well, hey everyone, how's it going? So, if you look at this meter here, you'll see that it reads 12.63 volts DC. Yet, I have absolutely nothing plugged into this inverter. And of course, my meter has reset because I've had it on for too long. Let's try this again. Alright, 12.62 volts. So, there is still a charge on this inverter and I think what many people don't understand there are very large capacitors inside here in fact I can show you on a low frequency model here this is a main board off of a low frequency 12 volt inverter that I use for a bench test you can see the size of those uh, capacitors down there they're massive 18,000 it's got 18,000 microfarad. Okay? It's an enormous amount of energy that is stored in these, and these aren't even the biggest ones the power jack has. We've got another set down here, those are even bigger. So, when you plug an inverter into a battery and the inverter is not charged, meaning those caps are not charged, you will get an enormous spark. I mean, it will just bam. And it's scary to some people who think that well, there must be something wrong with the inverter when there actually isn't, or they just don't understand. And this happens for all inverters. Modified sine wave, the cheap Duracell ones, it doesn't matter what it is. You've got capacitors that are charged, okay? So you can see that this inverter is slowly losing its charge. That's because the caps are slowly discharging themselves because they are still energizing the circuitry that is on the inside here. Now, if you were to leave this like it is for maybe an hour, you'll completely discharge the, the caps. If you want to discharge them immediately, you've got a couple of options. You could short out the two posts so you could take some wire or tool, you know, something like a big wrench or something like that. You could short out the two posts. You'll get a spark but that will immediately discharge the caps. Or the second option is to just turn the inverter on with it not being plugged into the battery bank. And leave the inverter on. And you can see how fast it's actually discharging. The bigger inverters discharge even faster because they power all sorts of other things like LCD screens and so on. So you can see that it's coming down real fast. Those are your two ways to do that, and I know that it's um, it can be confusing because, you know, as soon as you disconnect it, it should be discharged, right? You know, you're unplugging it, right? That's not the case. So it's one of those things you just have to, to, to look out for. There's an awful lot of energy inside these caps right here. They store a lot of energy, and so it's one of those things that uh, you just have to be aware of. I get asked about this a lot. So if I were to hook this battery, this little battery, up to these posts, I would get a pretty sizable spark because the voltage is pretty low. Now, if the voltage was around the same voltage as the battery itself, then I wouldn't get any spark or maybe a very little itty-bitty spark. So there you have it. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, again, the bigger the inverter, especially the 15-kilowatt inverters, those monsters, they have two sets of these caps so you're charging a lot of caps um, in order to get the inverters to run I think it's 10 caps so very large capacitors that are in there and they all get that rush of current all at once to charge those caps so that's something to be aware of when you're connecting your battery bank for the first time it produces a very scary and a very large spark and you can actually, it almost welds your battery cable to these terminals. And you'll always see, especially on the big ones, the big inverters, you'll see a big black plot mark on the corner there where they were touched initially. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely scary at first. For me personally, I use a power supply to charge the caps first because I can hook the power supply up to the terminals charge them up, disconnect them, they stay charged as I demonstrated before, then I can hook my batteries up, I get no spark at all. 
You can also use a incandescent bulb and run it uh, between the posts and the source, the battery bank, and that will slowly charge the caps up. It usually takes about 30 minutes. That'll avoid the spark. But if you're not too concerned about it, just be aware of it. Usually what I do before I did any of that is I would take the battery the, the battery cable itself and I would just smack the uh, the terminal real fast because if you try to come out real slow and be all nice about it it's gonna boom you know on you and it's gonna you know it's gonna scare you so I usually just take it and go smack and then they're charged I mean it takes just half a second to charge those caps there's a lot of current rushing in so there you have it hopefully that answers any questions that you might have and if you have any more questions regarding any of the inverters power jack converters of course you can always get a hold of me the easiest way is through Facebook YouTube comments is very cumbersome to try to offer any support for anybody I can answer general questions but hit me up on my OTG vlog Facebook messenger and I can have a one-on-one -on -one with you and answer your questions the best that I can and hopefully get you some help so again if you have any questions let me know take care